We have been monitoring the virus situation very closely and as you can all of you know, it is spreading very quickly to countries everywhere. And Singapore, as a small, open city connected to the world, we face a higher risk of imported cases. And that's why the task force has decided to take additional precautions for travel in and out of Singapore. For outgoing travellers, we are putting an advisory to defer all non-essential trips to Iran, Northern Italy, Japan and the whole of the Republic of Korea. For incoming travellers, uh, we will not allow visitors who have had recent travel history from Iran, Northern Italy and the Republic of Korea. We have not included Japan in the incoming restrictions because the number of uh, infected cases in Japan at this stage is still lower compared to the other countries. So for Japan, we have placed uh, the advisory, we are managing the risk by having an advisory on outgoing trips at this juncture. Right, so for the incoming um, visitors, the restrictions are for the three places I highlighted. And then for citizens, residents and long-term pass holders coming back, returning to Singapore, we will issue them a stay-home notice. So these are the new travel restrictions that we are putting in place. In addition, we are putting in place a new screening mechanism at our checkpoints because we know that the temperature scanners alone are not sufficient. So we will now also identify, look out for people with uh, respiratory symptoms, identify them and request that they take a swab test in order to test whether they are positive for the uh, virus. We have to be mentally prepared uh, for the number of infected cases in Singapore to go up. Uh, we have been used, in, uh, used to, I think, the experience so far in these past few days uh, in Singapore where the number of cases rises by just a handful every day and we've become accustomed to it in a way but this may not be the norm and it can change very easily. You see this in other countries too where it, it, you, know, you have very few cases for a few days and then suddenly one incident occurs, one event occurs and there is a sharp spike in cases and sustained transmission. This has happened elsewhere. It can happen in Singapore too. Some then ask if this can happen, then what's the point of having all these restrictions? Well, the answer is that the border controls are still useful at this stage of the epidemic because we can still identify where the sources of risk are and then we can take appropriate measures to reduce the risk from these infected sources. And by doing so, we flatten the epidemic curve in Singapore, we buy ourselves time, and then we avoid a situation where our hospitals get overwhelmed by a sudden surge of cases. So this is useful, um, but we have to be prepared that at some stage, uh, the border controls alone will not be sufficient and we cannot stop the virus at our borders because the virus will spread to countries everywhere around us. And even in countries where they do not report a lot of cases, there may well be undetected cases going of virus infections going around. So we will be exposed at that stage to multiple waves of infection and we have to be ready for that. We cannot stop it from happening, 